So, team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And Eric DaCosta, uh, John Harbaugh, Joe Hortiz, they just had uh, their pre draft presser, aka the Liars Luncheon, uh, where they try to throw a few smoke screens here and there. We're going to talk about everything that they talked about today. Before we get into this, um, I seriously got to say I appreciate y'all. Um, reason I say that is just because I just see so much positivity. Um, in the comments, whether it be in, on Twitter, Facebook, wherever. And I, I really seriously appreciate that. And like I always say, I don't care about if you agree with me or not. That's fine. But I always do appreciate the support. I appreciate you voicing however you feel about whatever we talk about respectfully. I appreciate your support of the channel. People that are new here, people that are old here, people that have been here since the, the car videos, people that have been here since just however long you've been here. I seriously thank you. Because the fact that you, you choose, because you don't have to, but the fact that you choose to spend a little portion of your day with us as we talk about whatever it is going on in the NFL or whatever it is going on with the Ravens, I appreciate that. So know that if ain't nobody tell you today that you appreciate it, I appreciate you straight up. Thank you. Thank you. If you one person watching this alone, if you're watching this with your family, if you're watching this with your spouse, your friends, whatever. If you're watching it at the barbershop, you got it playing on while you get your lineup done. Cool. I appreciate it. If you're playing Madden right, cool. I appreciate it. If you're cooking dinner, you're cleaning up, whatever you're doing, thank you. Seriously. Uh, but anyway, Eric DaCosta, oof, he, um, <laughs> he had a lot to say today. Uh, one of the questions that he was asked about, uh, the first thing we're going to talk about, um, they asked him, oh, so you were, the reports were that you were interested in talking to one Bobby Wagner, but it obviously didn't work out. Um, and he said, are, are you still, what are you going to do next as far as moves? Are you done? Are you going to wait to the draft? Like, what's that going to be? Uh, and he talked about how they're always looking at value as far as players and whatnot, specifically free agents. And then also uh, with the draft, too, of course. But he said, just because the first and second wave of free agency is passed us by, it does not mean that we're done. So that would indicate that they have some more moves that they're going to make. And I think that's expected. But then this next part where he, he brought up how they signed Daryl Smith uh, sometime in May. And that was after the draft. He said that could also happen with the Ravens now. Uh, but then he also talked about how they have some moves to announce over the next couple of weeks. Now, initially, I know a lot of people, y'all might have taken that a lot differently from me. Um, I did not take that as them signing people over the next couple of weeks. Well, I mean, they obviously could, but the way that I took it more was them moving people, them trading people, them releasing people, them clearing up some roster spots uh, over these next couple of weeks. I will see. I could be wrong, as I have been wrong before, but I, I just didn't take it as, all right, oh, Raven's about to make some blockbuster move. They're getting ready to do something crazy. Da -da. I didn't take it as that. It didn't seem like that, but... These next couple of weeks, they'll, they will tell us uh, the whole story. So, uh, getting into it from the beginning, um, Eric DaCosta, a lot of this pre-draft presser, to me, in my opinion, um, it was just him sort of reiterating a lot of the same things that he has said in the, the, the past couple of presses. Today was actually the first press conference where I do not think, they must have put a note on every reporter's chair, like, do not ask about Lamar Jackson, do not ask about Lamar Jackson, do not ask about Lamar Jackson, because I didn't hear not one question about Lamar Jackson, not one question about his contract. And I mean, there's really nothing to talk about with it, because there hasn't been anything going on with it. Um, but I do think those reporters probably got a little heads up from them. Anyway. Um, but a, a lot of this press conference was a lot of stuff that he said already as far as the Ravens strategy, them being uh, responsible with cap and whatnot, them loving their draft picks. And it was a really good question that somebody asked about the way that the Ravens value draft picks. But we're going to cover all of that for you. If you missed the conference, if you watched the conference, we got you covered either way. I appreciate y'all again. So. Eric DeCosta started off talking about how they made some moves last draft that gave them some additional picks this year. He talked about the trade with Arizona. Uh, he talked about some other stuff, too. Uh, he said they, not, they have nine picks in the first four rounds, and he said they'll have a few guys in over the next 10 days. Uh, he also talked about how they had that big tryout yesterday with a bunch of players, too. Um, he talked about how it's been nice to see guys from Maryland, from the University of Maryland, uh, get drafted. So, uh, Jameson Hensley, he started it off. I think Jameson Hensley, I know he's been covering Ravens for a long time. So, I guess he got that seniority. Where he, it's like every press conference, he always asks the first question. It's usually him. Uh, but anyway, shout out to Jameson Hensley. He said, 
Um, he asked about a contingency plan for Ronnie Stanley. Whew. Uh, and he said, we're not sure how Ronnie's going to rebound, um, but he said that he's on a good pace and that they're optimistic. Uh, but he did talk about how they brought in Morgan Moses and they also have Jawan James and said they could also have an opportunity to draft a guy. And yeah, that's something that y'all know we've been saying all of last year uh, and all this offseason. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready with left tackle. You hope Ryan Stanley can come back. If he comes back, great. But stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Because what if he goes down again? Because that's got to be like, it's got to be an unwanted expectation in your mind. If you're a Ravens GM, if you're a Ravens owner, if you're a Ravens coach, if you're a Ravens fan, you have that unwanted expectation. All right, he's either not going to come back or if he does come back, he's probably going to end up going down. You hope it doesn't happen. Of course, you don't want it to happen. We all want Ronnie Stanley to come back 1000 percent. But it's always going to be in the back of your mind. Um, he also talked about uh, the, if, if how concerned he is with depth at the cornerback position. He said, we're definitely concerned, said they want to have as many guys as possible. He said they have some great guys coming back, and I really like this part. But um, until they come back, it's a question mark. And he said they could take one or two corners in the draft and bringing in Marcus Williams. That should help along with having Chuck Clark. He also talked about how Stevens should make a jump this year. Now, and, and that, when he said that, every time they talk about Brandon Stevens, anything they talk about with Brandon Stevens, I always believe them 1,000%. The reason being is because they showed us last year from jump, from preseason. Like, they talked they talked Brandon Stevens up a lot. They talked him up a lot when they drafted him, talked about how much they loved him and this and that. But then they showed, they followed that with action. And that dude was always on the field from jump. They loved him, and they you, you could tell the way, the, you could tell how much they loved him by the way that they used him. So, yeah, I, I would agree with Eric there, and I do not think that that was a lie. Um, he said that there's some good edge guys, said there may be a run on them in the top 10. Uh, he spoke about uh, David Ajabo and his injury, that Achilles injury. He said that that was unfortunate. Um, and he was also asked why draft picks are so important to him and why they value them so much. I love that question. Love it. Uh, and he said that it's something that he's thought about over the last three months, and especially when it, when he's been seeing a lot of these other teams have more instant success by moving off of some draft picks and just being a little more aggressive. Uh, he said that when you're able to draft franchise top type players uh, like Lewis, Suggs, Air Reed, Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews, he said these young players, they become a part of your city. And they're people that fans can really rally around. He said in our sport, we have a salary cap. When you draft a rookie, you know how much they're going to get paid. Uh, and he said it's not some irrational market price for the rookies because their pay is set for at least three to four or uh, four to five years. Um, he said that the draft became our lifeblood. He said that the draft allows you to be competitive every year, regardless of the salary cap. And he said, for us, as long as I'm here, the draft will be the foundation of what we do. So, um, and again, that just sounded like a lot of, uh, we have our philosophy and that philosophy is going to continue to be our philosophy and we're not trying to change it. So hopefully, since this was the liar's luncheon, hopefully he just leading people to believe something else. Like, all right, we're the Ravens. The way that we've been doing it is the way that we've been doing it and it's been working. And that's that's all we're going to do. Since it's been working for us, we've continued to be competitive. Contenders? Uh, competitive? Yeah. Contenders? Uh, but since we've been competitive, we're going to keep at that but again hopefully this is just a little diversion from them really getting aggressive especially on offense but hey we'll see seeing is believing uh next question was asked to john harbaugh um he was asked about the instant success that a lot of other teams have had uh john harbaugh said they've signed free agents before and they've even signed some this year and he said they've even signed some high price free agents before so harbaugh let it be known like hey we done done this before so don't talk about it like we ain't done it before but anyway he said your draft capital is your capital. And he said that EDC isn't shy about free agency or he's not shy about trades either. And he said, we'll do it however we can. And he also talked about how there's just not one way to do it because everybody like I feel like everybody um, looks at the Rams. And I mean, they are the Super Bowl champions and everybody looks at the Rams this year and say, oh, man, the Rams this year, the way that they did it. Oh, that's crazy. And yeah, it worked for them this year. But. Well, that, that's the only time that they've done. No, 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 no. Rams been on this. 
Rams have been on this vibe for a while now. This year paid off the most, but they've been doing it. Weren't they just in the Super Bowl a couple years? Yeah, they lost it, but did they make it or what? But again, you, you don't have to go Rams level. I, I think a lot of us Ravens fans, and, and I can, of course, only speak for myself, but whenever you talk about the Ravens potentially getting more aggressive, Everybody always points to the Rams and be like, all right, that's it. That's the end all be all. That's the only way you guys want Ravens to do things. Go be a Rams fan or something. No, it does not have to be that. But just to up it a little more, just to because these draft picks, yeah, they, they're not as they're not always as valuable as the Ravens try to make them. And we've seen that. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit with some more stuff that uh, a few of them had to say. But they can be more aggressive. You could trade some away with you moving up in the draft for a higher quality player. You trading some away for a highly, high, higher quality player. And I, it was my first time today. And I know the interviews from like weeks ago, but it was my first time today listening to the pivot when they had Jalen Ramsey on there. And he, he said it too. He said, you should always be in win now mode. And I agree. I agree with him 1000%. And Ryan Clark asked him a really good question. He said, um, it's with, with picks is potential over uh, proven. As far as draft picks, because draft picks, they give you potential. They, oh, yeah, they potential to do this versus somebody who's proven already. And I just I feel like with Ravens, they, in my opinion, they, they value potential a little too much. And a lot of times they don't even end up banking on that potential. They sell you on potential, but potential. it That's cool. But are you going to tap in and reach out and pull out that potential? Or are you just going to sell us on potential for forever? How about we get some proven as well, especially on offense? But anyway, let's keep it moving. Um, Hortiz, uh, Joe Hortiz said uh, it's a deep class of edge guys. Said they got opportunities to get one in the first in the top four rounds. Um, Eric DeCosta was asked about them not spending a lot of money or second contracts on the center position. Uh, he said they've had some vets at center. He said they br he brought out uh, Matt Burke. Um, also, he said, we've also gone the younger route and he talked about Ryan Jensen and he said, Ryan Jensen, uh, he went on to get a big contract, uh, and to win a Super Bowl. Uh, he left that part out though, but that's okay. Uh, he said, and, and with that team too, cause a lot of, uh, again, a lot of people, when it, when it, when we talk about going all in, everybody mentions the Rams, which I can understand recency bias. I get it. But look at, remember the Bucks too? Remember the Bucks? They had, they had a high quality at the wide receiver position. They had Mike Evans. They had one of the best receivers in the game, Mike Evans. They had Chris Godwin. They still they had um Cameron Brake and OJ Howard. They had quality at tight, but they still went and got a Rob Gronkowski. Obviously got Tom Brady, but um they still got a Rob Gronkowski. They had who who they had Ronald Jones and they had somebody. They still went out and got Legarrette Blunt. They had um, Chris, I mean, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Scotty Miller. So they had two nice outside receivers and a nice little slot receiver. They, they still went and signed Antonio Brown. So you see, like, these dudes still went all in. They still went all in. They were like, hey, we had, and, they, and their quality, they had real quality, like high, high quality. And they still were like, you know what? We're going to add even more quality to the high quality team that we got. Because we, we really want to make this Super Bowl happen. But anyway, um, Eric DeCosta also talked about how you may only have a few true centers in the draft. And he said, talked about how a lot of teams, um, they take a guard or a tackle and they end up converting them to center. Said it's a tough position to fill via the draft. And he said that they see four to five guys that they like at center that won't be first round picks. Uh, he said it's both a physical and a mental component, and they have to also uh, be leaders as well. So to me, again, liars luncheon, <laughs> that made it sound like he's going to take a center early. That's what it sounded like to me. Again, remember, because a lot of this stuff that they say here is opposite, but hey, we'll see. We got like a little less than a month. Um, he was asked, uh, if a running back falls, would you consider using a first or second round pick on a running back? Um, he said, I, I don't see, uh, no, yeah, he said, I don't know about a first rounder because I don't see anyone who would be like as, valued at a, as a first round running back. Um, but he did say as we get into the second or third or later rounds, uh, if the best player available is a running back, then we'll see. 
So that means no, he's not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He said, especially since we run the ball more than most people do. And he said that uh, Coach Harbaugh has been saying that for eight years now, that the Ravens have to have the strongest running game. Philosophy. Philosophy. But anyway, uh, Ryan Mink asks EDC if they feel like they have ammunition to move up in the draft if they want to. And Eric DaCosta said that um, with all the draft picks that they have, uh, it gives them the flexibility to do whatever they want to do. And then he started trolling right here. He said it's a strong possibility that they'll have more than 10 picks uh, or less than 10 picks when it's all said and done. So, yeah, EDC was trolling right there. Um, they asked EDC, have you changed the way that you assess the medicals as far as injury history and whatnot? And he said that they've always been pretty conservative uh, when it comes to that um, as far as players who have been hurt and whatnot. Um, he said very few times that they'll take a player uh, that had injury concerns in college. He said that some guys have injury history but don't miss practice or games. Uh, and he said it's not really a way that you can predict that. Um, so somebody asked Hobbs, how many first-year plug-in players do you think you can get in the draft? Uh, then ADC took it. Like, Hobbs was sitting there. They were asking him the question. The camera was on him. Then ADC said, oh, I got this one. Um, and he said, every pick you bring in, you expect him to play. Even Carter laughed at that, and he, he don't even know what's going on right now. Um, and he said that uh, every guy we take in the fourth round this year better be playing for us. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't think he was speaking literally for all their fourth round picks, but I think he was just speaking in general as saying that every guy that we draft, even if they're not a first or second rounder, if they're not the highest draft pick, then they need to be on the field contributing. Uh, then he said, which I thought was really funny, he said, that, does the data back that up? Probably not. So I appreciated that. I, I, I appreciated that honesty. Because for me, I love it. If you can get up there, and you know, these, like these Ravens, like Eric DaCosta, John Harbaugh, that was, like they got a good talk game. They got a real good talk game. But I appreciate when, if they get up there and they're honest, if they take accountability for different things. I always appreciate it, really from anybody. Um, but anyway, uh, EDC was asked about Stanley and Bowser coming off of serious injuries. Um, and they asked him, do you think, do you go into the draft thinking like worst case scenario, like if they don't come back or does that change your plans or whatever? And he said that they talk about the roster and they come up with different strategies and said that they try to protect themselves the best way that they can. And EDC might as well just said, we try to stay ready so we ain't got to get ready. So he said that uh, that's why they have, they had Jawan James already, but they still ended up signing Morgan Moses. Um, Ortiz mentioned how you have to look for interior defensive linemen uh, as far as three down players. Um, and he said that they are really hard to find. Um, so maybe, <coughs> excuse me, maybe they're trying to push Jordan Davis stock down a lot or a little bit so they could go and grab him. We'll see. Um, and ADC talked about how they have a lot of work to do to replace their defensive line and their pass rushers. Uh, he said that they see guys in the first three rounds that can come in and contribute. Now, uh, so I really like this question that somebody asked him, too. They said, EDC, how do you feel that you've done uh, in these first three years as the Ravens general manager? And he said he doesn't feel like his role is really any different than it's been since 2005, especially when it comes to the draft. Um, he said he's proud of what they've done as a team over the last few years, said that they aspire to do better, and a lot of that falls on him. Uh, he said it's hard for young players to play unless they have an opportunity. And then he said that there's an opportunity for our young guys that we have to play and for the guys that we draft to play. Hmm. So seeing will be believing with this one. Um, but when he said that, it, it's probably just me, but when he said that, that made me think that they would actually make a move for somebody like a, 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 a veteran, not even a veteran guy, but somebody who's established. Uh so we'll see what happens with that. Um, but again, like I said at the beginning, when he, when he talked about they got some moves to announce, that, that part to me did not sound like he's talking about signing people. That Again, it, it sounds like he's talking about uh, trading people, releasing people, something like that. Uh, so we'll see. Um, he was asked, uh, what do you learn about someone when you draft a player and they don't get on the field? Uh, EDC said that's self-scouting. Sometimes it can be bad evaluation. See, again, I, I, I always appreciate the honesty. I, I love it. He said that sometimes it could be bad evaluation. Sometimes it could be injuries, which is also true. Some guys just, they get drafted, 
and they can't stay healthy. He said it could be off the field character. He said it could be a lot of different factors and said it could be opportunities where guys uh, didn't initially have an opportunity because they had guys that were in front of them. He said sometimes a salary cap. Um, and he said something. He said it's not just one answer. And he also talked about how. Uh, what did he say? He also talked about how. Um, as far as the salary cap, he said sometimes you'll, you'll have guys where you'll have them for a couple of years and they don't really get much of an opportunity. And then they do get an opportunity at the very end of their contract and then it'll be too late to pay them because they end up blossoming and now they're like a hot commodity in those free agent streets. So uh, Ortiz talked about how EDC puts the guys in preferential order as far as the draft board. Uh, he said it's an underrated class for quarterbacks. So this is where he try to push up quarterback so somebody else will take a quarterback ahead of you um he said that Malik Willis is a dynamic player and he has an unbelievable arm and he said Kenny Pickett had an had an outstanding year and he said a lot of quarterbacks are going to outperform their draft projection so again they're just trying to boost up these quarterbacks so somebody could take a quarterback in front of them um Harvest was asked about what type of cornerbacks that he likes he said bigger faster stronger so you know my guy Harvest be playing Madden um, he said, if you're going to compromise, then you have to decide which one of those traits you're willing to live without. And I appreciated the way he broke that down. Uh, he said, you like to have a 6'3 corner, but they're not all like that. And he said, uh, he just likes physical players at corner and guys with ball skills. Um, Hensley, Jameson Hensley asked if Eric DeCosta would be in favor of an NBA type of style draft lottery uh, to where if teams tank, um, just because they tank to get the higher pick that they don't, and it's a lottery, it's like a, a random, you know how that goes, a random selection. Uh, and Eric DaCosta said that he ain't really been ever thought about that like that. Um, Hobbs, on his contract extension, he said that he feels grateful, but still motivated all at the same time. Said we need to win more games. <laughs> he said we need to win more playoff games. <laughs> yeah. And he said we need to win championships. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal uh, He said he's determined to get us all where we want to be I mean, Hortiz was asked about uh, the tight end Shig from uh, Maryland He said he's undersized, versatile, uh, and has real good speed And he said that for the Ravens, he'd be able to do multiple things So they ain't drafted him <laughs> Eric DaCosta uh, said that every team, every year Is trying to find new ways to beat your behind um, and that was when he was asked if they like trying to develop any like new strategies, anything uh, as far as the draft from their experiences with COVID. Uh, he said, and he said, if we, if I told you that, I had to kill you. I said, oh boy. And he laughed at it. He said, oh no, just joking, whatever. But I was like, oh hey, don't ask that question again. Um, and then he was asked about the possibility of uh, bringing back Brandon Williams and Calais Campbell, and he said their job is to see what where they have holes, to see how much money they have, and make the best decision. And he said with the cap, they're going to be responsible with their deals. Uh, he, and he said the cap is not unlimited. And that was that. So it actually went a lot faster than I thought it was going to. Um, and yeah, I, I didn't really, I didn't really get it anything too crazy out of it i mean of course we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks if anything um but yeah like i said the the biggest things that i got from it were when he talked about they they had moves to announce over the next couple of weeks it sounded like people leaving the ravens instead of them coming on um and again like we mentioned earlier too um a lot of it was just them Letting people know, like, we are the Ravens. We've been doing it this way for a long time. And we're going to continue to do it this way moving forward because we've overall had success uh, doing it in our uh, team's existence, in our team's short existence, as a matter of fact. So we'll see how it goes. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all for listening. Thank you. And we out.